Hi, I'm Rick Yurtberg here at Mad Fiber headquarters in Seattle. Uh, you can see behind me uh, where these little beauties are made. So what is a Mad Fiber wheel? Well, it's, it's all composite, it's all carbon fiber. In some ways, we've reinvented the wheel to better suit this um, material. Carbon likes to carry tension loads. It does that better than almost anything else. But in order to be a wheel, um, we have to arrange the components so that these tension loads are all at seas. You can see, in some ways, we've just uh, designed a new type of spoke. The spoke is now a ribbon. You can see it's quite thin, quite flexible. This is five plies of, of fiber, only the outside and inside of which you can see. And uh, it's bonded to the hub, and it's bonded to the inside of the rim. See, it actually enters the rim right here and disappears. It's bonded over a large area inside. So the tension of the spoke, the support it gives to the rim and to the tire, is spread out much more effectively than in a traditional type of wheel. Another benefit of this sort of construction is that the wheel is true forever. It'll never need any adjustment. Uh, there's nothing you can do besides smashing it to make it uh, ever lose its trueness or for any of this tension uh, to, go, to go away. It'll sound like this 50 years from now. How do we get the tension into the spokes? With a traditional wheel, there's a, a nut and thread, a nipple, that we tighten to make the spoke tighter. In this wheel, we have to bond all the spokes in place to perfect length. And then the very last step is pulling this hub sideways, pulling these two sides away from each other. That creates the tension. And once the tension's been created, we bond these uh, hub halves in place and the, the tension and trueness is forever uh, trapped and stable. To better understand this, this type of wheel, I, I'm going to have to tell you how it's made. We have a, a collection of pretty flat, pretty simple shaped components which are bonded into a three-dimensional structure. For instance, what looks like a rim to you is actually three pieces. There's a sidewall on one side, a sidewall on the other side, and a center. The three have to be bonded together to form a rim. The spokes are these flat ribbons with a foot at either end where a bond is made. Each side of the hub is a separate piece and there's a tube in the very middle. So this collection of parts, if we laid them out on a table, wouldn't stand up, you know, even an inch tall. They're all just flat like playing cards. But when they're bonded correctly into this 3D structure, the magic uh, can happen. Now they're speaking to each other and in some ways building a wheel this way kind of blurs the functions of the components. For instance, this sidewall, which I said was part of the rim, is actually an extension of the spoke more than in a standard wheel. This spoke transmits its load through a big uh, bond area and then there are fibers within the sidewall which carry that tension out to a large area of the rim. So in some ways this sidewall is arguably more a spoke than a rim compared to a standard wheel. And in some ways, this part of the hub is really a spoke more than it's a hub because the tension of the spoke goes into it and there are fibers that wrap around this corner so that the center, which really is a hub, so that the center can hold the tension stably. So it's this, uh, this component approach that makes it so conducive to carbon fiber, which is really, a, like I say, it carries tension loads very effectively it's sort of a two-dimensional material. If you want a 3D shape out of it, you have to set it up correctly. It won't just pile like bricks and mortar or like metal into a 3D shape with, with uh, all-around um, integrity. You have to design that integrity into a, a composite shape. So this, in some ways, for many of you, is the first wheel you've ever seen which is designed for com carbon fiber. As compared with carbon fiber replacing other materials, this one starts with the fiber and is built out. As a result of this more efficient fiber orientation to suit carbon fiber and the stability of this bonding, we end up with an incredibly light structure. Um, this front wheel is about 430 grams um, and yet it can hold a 700 pound static load, the kind of a load that would crush most, most any wheel. Uh, why light wheels? What's the difference? Well, when you spin a wheel up to speed, it really helps if it's light. That makes it much easier to accelerate. 
it makes it especially easy to climb. So the riding a wheel like this is sort of a shocking experience and I recommend you never pass it up if it comes your way uh, because it makes it feel like your motor has got a few more horsepower. Let's take a look at a rear wheel for a second. It's very similar to a front wheel in that it has these ribbon spokes on both sides. There are a few more of them of course. This pattern you see is to transmit torque from your pedaling out to the rim. Um, we've got a titanium free hub. It's made by Doug White in Petaluma. Um, like the front hub, uh, the wheel is tensioned by pulling the two halves aside. The spokes all nest very neatly outside of this driver. Your pedaling twists the free hub body, which in turn moves this driver. The driver moves this nest of spokes, both with a bond that you can't see and also with this hexagonal shape. Do you see? The hexagonal shape of the black piece is going to drive the hexagon pattern of spokes around it. So we end up with one of the most um, power resistant uh, wheels that has ever been made. Uh, you could be tremendously strong and never feel any flex uh, in your rear wheel. As you can see, this is a, a sew-up type wheel. It's going to use a glued on tubular tire. We're going to design a uh, clincher wheel and introduce it next year. We look forward to that. But for now, the only model is, uh, is this tubular wheel. A pair, uh, they're weighing about 1050 to 1070 grams each. We don't have a rider weight limit because there really hasn't been a, a, a human uh, large enough to actually hurt the wheels. So we we just uh, advise common sense when choosing equipment and uh, test rides to verify that you're going to get the kind of ride you want. But uh, these two wheels are uh, substantially stronger than, than many of the heavier duty aluminum wheels that are on the market. If you look real closely at the brake surface, you'll see uh, kind of a dullness. I don't know if it shows on camera, but we put fiberglass over the brake surface for the sake of uh, uh, braking smoothness. We recommend the use of a, a cork type pad that uh, we're very fond of and provide with each wheel, but um, the, the fiberglass brake surface gives a very nice uh, modulation and, and weather uh, resistance. It's raining outside right now, as is often the case in Seattle, so we're real concerned that you have full braking in the wet as well. Another detail about this kind of wheel, um, we want it to be strong and light and efficient, and what you're really getting is naked technology. Except for these stickers, this wheel is naked. It hasn't got paint or clear coat. It's got no makeup. You're just seeing the raw unit. I don't think there's anything else in cycling that you would buy that would be quite so raw in a sense. That's not supposed to excite you, but it's just a detail about what it takes to get down to this weight level and, uh, and, and to the type of strengths that, that, we, uh, that we've designed into this wheel. You're seeing, you're seeing the whole thing. You're seeing uh, the beauty, uh, all the details, and all the flaws. There's nothing between you and, and, and the function here. Well, the wheel I'm holding has just been made. It's brand new. It's going to be delivered to a, a lucky rider here in the next week or two. Um, I think it's number 274 of our latest production. So one of you will be riding wheel number 274. Um, we can't make very many right now. Our factory capacity is only about two sets a day, but we're going to quickly grow it. Um, in the meantime, look for a demo near you. Um, we're trying to host as many as we can. We're uh, setting up dealers as quickly as we can. If you ever get a word of a demo that you can attend, I would recommend you not pass it up because riding this wheel is a, could be a very unexpected pleasure. Um, like I say, no rider weight limit means they're extremely stable while being light. You might be surprised how, how quickly you can go. Um, they sell for $2,600 a pair. That includes quick releases, brake pads, valve extenders, a wheel magnet. We have a four year warranty and we have a crash replacement policy which um, you can uh, check out on our website which is www.madfiber.com. Drop us a line if you have any questions. There are just 12 of us here so it's not hard to get through to the person who knows the answer. Thanks for visiting us here on a cloudy somewhat rainy day in Seattle but uh, You'll be hearing a lot more of us in the future.